There was a little cartoon in the paper not all that long ago, and uh, Grandpa was talking to his children, and the children were trying to get Grandpa to go ahead and make some funeral plans. And so he said, well, my first wife was buried on the West Coast, and his new wife now was in the central part of the country. And so the kids said, well, you know, you could be cremated. You could have half your ashes out with your first wife, and you could have the other half of your ashes with your second. Grandpa got this smile on his face, and he said, so for the first time in my life, I can be two places at once. When I started in this work, the cremation rate was one and a half percent. Those of us that will survive in the future are the ones that have been able to become adaptive. When a family comes to us and says, you know, we would like to have our horse out in front of your building, uh, a live horse, because our daughter or son was a horseback rider. We'd like to have uh, the Harley Davidson brought into the building and we'd like the ashes to be placed inside the saddlebags. We don't raise our eyebrows and, and look as though this is really unusual. We look at how do we make this happen. So this, what you're seeing is really an evolution. Well, this is our uh, Bradshaw Celebration of Life Center. This is our new concept where we see the future of, the future of funeral service going. Up until now, there has really been only one type of cremation, and that's the kind that most people are familiar with, which is flame-based cremation. There was a new type of cremation that has been developed, uh, green cremation, it basically is a water-based cremation. We're the first in Minnesota and the second in the nation to offer it. I think for me, being the operator of a crematory, uh, it's something that's very personal. And living here in a small town, we end up knowing a lot of the people who we serve. I remember one case especially where it was a father and the, his son had died in a car accident. And we didn't have the viewing in this room. It actually took place on the other side, which was never the intention. And the father said, can I come around and actually help you place my son inside? For him, it was, I was there when my son was born and I'm gonna be there in the very end also. It's really a big deal to be the last person that's there and performing kind of the final act. Barium is a place for cremated remains, and oh. each individual unit is called a niche. Niche. Okay. Well, those are all urns that fit in any of our niches. Yeah, but they yeah. Could, you put them because they're decorative. Yeah. We probably don't have more than 15 or 20 years left, but mm -hmm. I could figure it out. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. yes, I'd like to look at this. So, do you have an estimate of what the cost, the cost of the building? This building? Uh, just under 30 million. 
This particular wall just happens to be 10% more than the, the niches I showed Because this is a nicer place. <laughs> Come on. Well, not because it's a nicer place, because it's a little bit more popular. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, how expensive are these? They go from anywhere from 28000 to 49000 I think the board is taking a cut on this. <laughs> it's too expensive. Raj, how many people keep keep uh, ashes in their garage. In I think garage? we would all be surprised to learn just how many people retain the cremated remains at home. Really? Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. And he well, said- it's a lot cheaper. Well, yeah, but then if nothing gets done with them and that person should pass on, but then what like, happens? Yeah, but I don't, what, what's the point of that? You know, what cremation does allow is for procrastination. Mm -hmm, yeah. yeah, I guess you're right. But yeah. that, well, that's kind of weird. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I won't keep any of your ashes. Sure I'll be anyway. Thank you. So, that's really something. That's amazing. Okay, well, this is very interesting. There's so many different things you can do. Lots of choices. And I'm certainly sorry you're here. Yeah. My sympathies, of course. Yeah. When are you going to put mom's ashes in? Now, maybe you know that already. We do. You've got a mom's cookie jar or her, no. uh, you know, her, her uh, antique Chinese yeah. pot. Or, I mean, people get very creative. One of our funeral directors on staff here was actually it was at Disneyland and was on the Space Mountain. Isn't that Disneyland? Space Mountain, right? And um, somebody was ahead of them on the roller coaster, scattering their loved one off the roller coaster. And he's like, you know, not kidding. So, yeah, I mean, everything is fair game at that point. Bad taste alert. New company turns dead people into ammo. One pound of grandpa's remains is enough for a case, 250 rounds of 12 gauge shotgun shells. There you go, um, $1,250, Holy Smoke LLC. We'll take care of it for you. Um, Earthrise service, base flight with return to Earth starting at 995. Launch to lunar orbit or the surface of the moon, 1250. Yes, and then the ultimate Voyager service launch into deep space. The Celestis Earthrise Memorial Service launches a symbolic portion of cremated remains to outer space on board a powerful rocket and gently returns the precious cargo to Earth, creating a memorial keepsake unlike any other. There comes a point when we need to figure out something to do with those ashes. You know, some type of burial or, or a committal service or scattering or whatever it is. Some families will create a shrine. Some people I've known where they've taken the loved one and put them in the car, put a seatbelt on them and take them for a ride. Or another person might put them, the ashes in bed with them and say, good night, honey. In other words, they create a false reality. You know, even though somebody might rationalize this, it's still not rational in the sense that, you know what, they're not here. This is just uh, ashes. This is not them. Does the urn look okay and everything? Okay, good, I like that one. And we're just getting the coffee going right now and everything. And... Okay. All right. And that's your uh, wedding portrait mm -hmm. on the left? Yes. How long were you married? 65 years. 65? Yes. That's a pretty good run. Yeah. All right. I see your guests are starting to arrive, so I'm going to go ahead and put on the video now, if okay. that's okay. There is kind of the spiritual sense in scripture that says ashes to ashes, dust to dust, we must return. There comes a point when we must surrender. We must let that person go. I had several cases where several women, maybe six, seven months after their spouse died, who had developed cancer and other serious illnesses because they had not let go. Cremation, yes, gives people a bit more liberty not to rush, yet it is very important that they do something. I chose cremation mainly because of the expense of a funeral. And our thinking was such a waste 
people buy these big caskets. They put them in the ground, and in time they do deteriorate. So I figured this would be the only way to go. I also am going to be cremated. So we'll be together, of course. We live our lives not terribly mindful of the fact that we are going to die. It's an easy thing to ignore. As far as liking the options, burial, cremation by fire, or cremation with use of water, I don't like any of them. That's the bottom line. I've told my wife that um, if I die and it's possible, I want her to uh, bring me home, lay me out on the kitchen table. She's got to wash me and dress me. And I'd like to be buried directly in the ground without a vault. I'd like my body to sort of become part of the cycle of life again. If, if I were to die, I, at this point, my, my preference would, uh, I, I'm still making my own choices, and it would probably be between uh, burial or green cremation. I suppose right now, if I were to die rather suddenly, I would be, my full body would be buried in the ground and I would not be cremated. So I'm, we're not advocating doing one or the other. And there are discussions out there about new traditions and such like this. Bottom line is, is we all have different traditions. And we, so it isn't like we all have to follow one path. What a boring country it would be if we all followed the same path.